up till now we discussed the Hertz dipole, the extension of the Hertz dipole to a dipole of finite size. We also saw some general characteristics of antennas like directivity, effective aperture, radiation pattern and so on. In this lecture, we investigate some practical antennas which are used at low frequency and at UHF and VHF bands. Essentially, these antennas lie in the category of dipole. However, what we note when we go to the low frequencies, since the dipole should have a length comparable to the wavelength to have a substantial radiation, the size of the dipole becomes excessively large when we go to low frequencies. In that situation, an uh, antenna, what is called a monopole antenna, is used. And essentially, it finds application in medium wave broadcasting. So, if you go to the medium wave radio stations, invariably the antenna which is used for broadcasting is the monopole antenna. In fact, the radiation principle behind monopole antenna is identical to that of a dipole. Only thing is, here we have only a half of the dipole and we erect that half length of the dipole over a ideal ground plane. We have seen as you go to low frequencies, even if the conductivity of the medium is not very good, the medium starts behaving more like a conductor. Precisely that is the fact we make use of that when we go to low frequencies, the earth which is not a very good conductor start behaving more like a conductor and then if I have an antenna, if I erect it over the ground surface, it behaves as if it is mounted over a ideal conducting surface. And for investigating the characteristics of this monopole antenna which is erected over the conducting surface, essentially we use the concept of images. So, if you have a charge and if I put a charge over a conducting surface, equivalently we have an image of the charge. So, let us say if you are having a ground surface like that and for understanding purpose let us say this ground is an ideal uh, ground plane that means the conductivity of this is infinite. So, if I put a charge over this let us say this charge is positive. Then you will have the electric field which will be which will end on the conducting surface perpendicular to it because the tangential component of the field has to go to 0. So, you will have the fields which will go like that. So, these fields when they reach to the conducting surface they will be normal to the conducting surface and that is equivalent to saying that I have a negative charge which is located exactly at the same distance from here on the other side of the surface that also is going to give me the field distribution which will be identical to this field distribution. So, the ground plane can be replaced by an image charge. So, this thing is essentially equivalent to putting a negative charge here and then replacing the ground plane or we can say conversely if we have the positive and negative charges, we can say this is equivalent to having a charge and a ground plane. Precisely that is the fact we make use of when we investigate the characteristics of a monopole antenna. Now, instead of having a charge, if I have a current, then let us say there is a current which is flowing like that. So, there is a positive charge here which is moving this way to get a negative charge. We get an image of each of these charges on the other side. So, you get here this will be negative, this will be positive. So, you will get a current which will be flowing this direction. But if I take a charge, let us say this is positive here and negative here. So, this is positive, this is negative and the current flows like that then the image of this positive charge will be negative. 
image of this positive charge, negative charge will be positive. So, this is positive, this is negative. So, the current flows in the same direction. So, what we see from here, if you have a charge, then the image has opposite polarity. If you have a current which is parallel to the conducting surface, in this case horizontal, then the current will have a direction which is opposite to the original element, this image will be opposite compared to this. However, if the current is vertical, then the image has a direction same as the original current. There is no 180 degree phase shift between this current and this current. So, while investigating the antennas which have the current flows, essentially depending upon the direction of the, of the current or orientation of the antenna, you have to take appropriately the images and then we can replace the ground plane by its appropriate image. So, essentially the problem is to have a charge or current located over the ground plane and replace the ground plane by their corresponding images or conversely if you are having the currents which are like that then that is equivalent to saying that we have only this current and there is a ground plane. We have seen the current distribution on the dipole antenna and that is the current is sinusoidal distribution over the dipole. So, it is something like that which is symmetric, these two lengths are equal and we also had seen that the current which flows in the dipole is in the same direction. So, the current here is like that, here it will be like this, in this half it will be like that, this will be like this. So, we have a situation which is similar to this situation that you are having currents which are flowing in the same direction. That means, this dipole now is equivalent to a ground plane and a half of this dipole mounted on this. So, if I, if I take this and put this antenna like this, here I am exciting with a voltage between the two terminals of the antenna. Here the voltage will be connected between the ground and the terminal of the antenna. The current distribution on this antenna will be exactly identical to this current distribution. So, this will be again like that. This structure now we call as the monopole antenna. So, we have half of the dipole, so we call it monopole and the monopole now is mounted on a ground surface. So, its behavior is identical to the full way of the dipole antenna. So, we have here antenna which is monopole, but its radiation characteristics are identical to the dipole antenna except few differences which we will mention for in a short while from now. So, this antenna is dipole and equivalent of that this antenna which is the monopole antenna. Firstly, the differences we should note between these two antennas is that the radiation pattern which we are going to get for this monopole is identical to that of dipole because this is equivalent to saying that I have a another current element which is which is located here with the same current distribution. So, this lower half. So, radiation characteristic if I if I find out like radiation pattern that is exactly identical to the dipole antenna. So, the point which you have it has identical radiation patterns. except that now the radiation is not going below this surface because we have a conductor in this and as we saw electromagnetic wave cannot propagate inside the conductor. So, in the lower half of this the energy does not propagate. So, I have a radiation pattern which is identical to this only in the upper half of the hemisphere. 
that means the dipole has a radiation which is in the infinite space whereas the monopole has radiation in a semi infinite space so the radiation patterns are identical but radiation is in semi infinite space and since the radiation is only on the in the half of the space the power radiated for the same current on this antenna is half so the monopole has half the power radiated compared to dipole so monopole has half power half power that of a dipole for the same current excited in the antenna said differently since the power radiated is proportional to the radiation resistance for a given current the monopole has a terminal impedance or radiation resistance which is half of that of the dipole antenna so either we can say that the monopole radiates half the power which the dipole would radiate because it is radiating only in the half space or we can say that the radiation resistance of the monopole antenna is half of that of the dipole so what that means is that for the same current if we calculate now the fields which we are which we are going to get those fields will be identical to that of the or that of the dipole and since the dipole has a radiation pattern which is symmetric in phi over the ground plane it will be having a symmetric distribution in the around this antenna monopole antenna precisely that is the reason this antenna is used for low frequency radio broadcasting one is because when we go to the medium waves the wavelength is typically of the order of about few hundred meters so the size of the antenna is very large secondly if we have this antenna and want to mount like a dipole then this antenna has to be mounted at a significant height so that the ground effect does not play a significant role the radiation pattern does not get significantly affected on the contrary if i have a monopole then i can really mount that antenna on the ground which is vertical and then it will have a radiation pattern which is symmetric on the ground so as we have seen for the dipole if i take the typical radiation pattern this is my ground plane i have this monopole antenna which is equivalent to this dipole so if the length of this dipole is less than lambda we have seen that there is only one maximum for the radiation pattern so the radiation pattern i typically would would look like that so and the, and the and the electric field which is generated is theta oriented for this for this dipole so on the ground if we if we see the electric field will be like that that's the way the electric field is this is the electric field it has only theta component and it is symmetric in phi direction and as we go to higher and higher heights the angle increases and the electric field amplitude dies down so this antenna essentially gives you the maximum radiation anywhere on the ground surface as you go away or higher than over the ground surface then the amplitude of the electric field decreases that means this antenna is most suited to have radiation on the ground surface precisely that's what is the application in broadcasting that the purpose in broadcasting is to send the radio signals over the houses on the ground typically so we want that we should have a good distribution or good electric field on the ground surface also since the idea is to illuminate as large an area as possible on the ground we would like to have a uniform distribution on the ground both these things essentially are satisfied by this antenna which is the monopole antenna 
that is the reason this antenna is a very popular antenna for medium wave broadcasting because it does not have any directional characteristic on the surface of the earth and as you go higher essentially the field dies down where so so as we go above the ground surface we do not want to have any reception because most of the reception we want to have on the on the houses on the ground so this radiation pattern quite suits the requirement of the medium wave broadcasting so this monopole antenna is very much suited for medium wave broadcasting so if you go to the radio station which are low frequency or medium wave radio station you will see yes, a tower which is standing in front of the radio station in fact the tower itself is an antenna and this antenna is the monopole antenna so in practice monopole antenna is a very commonly used antenna and its radiation characteristics are identical to that of a dipole principally so if you understand the dipole then the understanding of monopole antenna is very straight forward as you go to high frequency however then the antenna size becomes small and then it is possible now to use effectively the dipole antennas so as we go to the frequencies where the wavelength becomes now few meters like tv signals then the dipole antenna is more commonly used antenna also the length of the dipole is typically taken as lambda by 2 and the things will become clear in a minute why we take that but a commonly used dipole approximately has a length of lambda by 2 so we have what is called a lambda by 2 dipole so as the name suggests we have the dipole whose total length is lambda by 2 so this is lambda by 4 this is lambda by 4 and the current is sinusoidal on that so the current is zero here so this is a quarter cycle which you will get on that so you will get a current distribution which will look like that look like that so if the if the current flows like this the current will flow like this so you will get an input impedance here which would correspond to the maximum current on this dipole we can write down the electric field for this from the general expression so as we know the radiation pattern or for this dipole is given as e theta which is j 60 im e to the power minus j beta r upon r times the radiation pattern which is f of theta where theta is the angle measured from this direction so this angle is theta and f theta which is the radiation pattern of the antenna that will be equal to cos of beta h cos theta minus cos of beta h upon sin of theta and h in this case is lambda by 4 so we have beta h that is 2 pi by lambda into lambda by 4 that is equal to pi by 2 so we have this quantity beta h pi by 2 so this cos of pi by 2 will be zero so the radiation pattern for this half wave dipole f theta will be cos of pi by 2 cos theta divided by sin theta so substituting for f of theta in this expression essentially we get the electric field 
for the half wave dipole. Now this one as we have seen it has only the nulls which are in the direction along the antenna along the axis of the antenna. It is also maximum when theta is equal to pi by 2 this is 1 this, this quantity is 0 so this is 1. So you get the maximum field which corresponds to theta equal to pi by 2. So its radiation pattern we have seen looks like similar to the Hertz dipole. It has only maximum perpendicular to the axis of the dipole and the field is 0 in the axis of the dipole. Knowing the electric field now then we can ask how much power now is going to be radiated by the by this half wave dipole or effectively what will be the radiation resistance of this half wave dipole. So we can calculate now the power radiated by this dipole. which you can get by finding out the pointing vector which will be mod e square by eta. So I can get for here the pointing vector let us say pr that is half of mod e theta square upon eta where eta is the intrinsic impedance of the medium which is 120 pi and the electric field is, is given by this. From here then we can calculate the power radiated. So this is W that will be in integrated over theta equal to 0 to pi, phi is equal to 0 to 2 pi the power density which is which is this so half mod e theta square upon eta incremental surface area which is r square sin theta d theta d phi There is a phi symmetry in the problem. So, integral with respect to phi is simply 2 pi and all other constants which are here if I combine them all together essentially we get the power radiated will be 30 into i m square 0 to pi the integral for theta that is cross square pi by 2 cos theta upon sin theta. We have here this quantity sin theta. So, square of that will become sin square theta. 1 sin square theta cancel with sin theta. So, you get sin theta here d theta. Note here the I m is the maximum current which you see on the dipole and in this case since the length of the dipole is lambda by 4 this is the current which is I m. So, this value of the current is essentially I m. So, in general dipole the maximum current need not be at the input terminals, but if you take a dipole which is lambda by 2 long then the input current is the maximum current which we can see on the dipole. Now, this integral cannot be solved analytically. So, this integral generally is solved by numerical means and the value of this integral is 1.218. So, this is equal to 30 into i m square into this integral value which is 1.218. So, the power radiated by the half wave dipole is approximately 36.54 into i m square. Now, as we did in the case of Hertz dipole, essentially we have this power radiated. We can say this is the power which is equivalently gone into a resistance, what is called the radiation resistance. So, we can say that this power is equal to 
w is also equal to half of i m square which is the input current into the radiation resistance. So, I can equate these two powers. This is the power which we have got by integrating the power over the, over the closed surface. This is the total power radiated. This is the power we have from the equivalent uh, electrical circuit. So, this thing should be equal to 36.54 into I m square. So, from here we get the radiation resistance of this antenna which is approximately 73.1 ohms. Now, generally the dipole has some reactive fields and these reactive fields give the small reactance at the input terminal. So, the resistive part of the impedance which you measure between the terminals of the antenna is about 73 ohms, whereas the reactive part has a, has a small value and the reactive part essentially is tuned out by shortening the antenna by a small amount. So, in practice we do not use an antenna which is exactly lambda by 2, but we use an antenna whose total length is about 0 0.47 lambda little shorter than 0 0.5 lambda. So, that the reactive part of the antenna is cancelled out and then you see an impedance at the antenna terminal which is approximately about 73 ohms. So, a practical antenna dipole antenna has a length of 0 0.4 7 lambda and this gives you the z n which is almost real and that is equal to the radiation resistance which is about 73 ohms. So, a dipole antenna has intrinsically an impedance which is not close to 50 ohms, its value is about 73 ohms. That is the reason the cables which, which were used initially for the dipole antennas, they were all standardized to 75 ohms. So, you will see in practice there are cables which are 75 ohm cables, there are cables which are 50 ohm cables. Most of the electronic equipment they are standardized for the 50 ohm characteristic impedance, whereas when we go to the antenna which especially the dipole antennas then the impedance is close to 75 and that cable will be 75 ohm cable. So, normally the antenna connections are made with 75 ohm cables whereas, the general electronic equipment they will be standardized to 50 ohm. Having got this total radiated power then one can calculate the half power beam width of the antenna. So, we, we are interested in finding out all the parameters of this antenna which is used in practice. So, now we are interested in finding out what is the half power beam width of this antenna, what will be the directivity of this antenna, what will be effective aperture of this antenna. So, the half power beam width is calculation is very straightforward. You take this radiation pattern, this one and find out the points where the field would go to 1 over root 2 of its maximum value and in this case the maximum value would be would be 1. So, you get the maximum value for the for this radiation pattern which is at theta equal to pi by 2 that gives you this maximum value as 1. So, if I go to an angle where the field would reduce to 1 over root 2 that direction will be the half power direction. So, I can I have this dipole half wave dipole for which the radiation pattern will look like that. This is the direction which is theta equal to pi by 2 and the electric field in this direction is unity. So, this point is 1. So, if I go to an angle that where the amplitude of electric field reduces to 1 over root 2, 1 over root 2. This is the width 
which is the half power beam width of the antenna in the E plane theta half power. The dipole antenna is symmetric radiation pattern in phi plane. So, there is no half power beam width defined in the phi plane. So, this antenna has a characteristic beam width which is only in theta direction which is this theta half power. So, we can find this out essentially by equating this f theta to 1 over root 2. So, if I take this cos of pi by 2 cos of theta divided by sin theta is equal to 1 over root 2. From here we can calculate these two directions where the field dies to 1 over root 2 value and then the difference between these two angles gives me the half power beam width. So, this one we can solve and to get the theta half power that is approximately 78 degrees. Remember the radiation pattern for the Hertz dipole was only sin theta that means the half power points for simple sin theta would be 45 degrees. So, this angle will be 45 degrees, this angle will be 45 degrees. So, the half power beam width for the Hertz dipole was 90 degrees. When we go from Hertz dipole to this half wavelength dipole, the angle essentially reduces from 90 degrees to 78 degrees. That means, the antenna becomes more directional. So, qualitatively if I look at the radiation pattern, the radiation pattern of a half wave dipole and a Hertz dipole are identical. However, if I see quantitatively, the two are not same because this antenna has narrower half power beam width and consequently, this antenna is more directive compared to the Hertz dipole. And same thing essentially you will see that if I change the length from half wavelength to full wavelength as you have seen the radiation pattern remains same, but the beam width will become still smaller and the antenna will become more directive. Coming back to the half wavelength dipole, once I know this half power beam width, then I can use approximate relation to find out directivity or we can go to the definition of directivity and from there you can calculate the directivity of the half wave dipole. So, we get directivity for this antenna d that is equal to 4 pi divided by theta 0 to pi phi 0 to 2 pi. square of this radiation pattern E theta square this quantity. So, this integral is exactly same as what we, what we have got here this quantity. So, you have here cos square pi by 2 cos theta upon sin theta d theta d phi. As you know the value of this integral, this integral or theta that is 1.218. So, this directivity is equal to 4 pi upon the integral over phi which is 2 pi and integral over theta that is 1.218. So, the directivity of the half wave dipole is about 1.64. As we mentioned earlier, the directivity is given in terms of d beads. So, we can take 10 log of this quantity to give you the directivity in d beads. So, we get d in d beads that is 10 log of 1.64 and that will be approximately equal to 2.15 d beads. So, the half wavelength dipole has a directivity 
of 2.15 dv that means in the direction perpendicular to the half wavelength dipole it will have an electric field or power density which will be 2.15 dB higher compared to an isotropic antenna. Once you know the directivity, we can calculate the effective aperture for this antenna. That means if this antenna half wave dipole is used for reception, then how much power it, it will it will accept that we get from effective aperture. A e and that will be equal to lambda square d upon 4 pi. This relation we derived in the last lecture. So, that is equal to 1.125 into 10 to the power minus 3 into lambda square. So, knowing now the directivity, you can get the effective aperture. So, if the antenna was used for the receiving antenna, that is the effective effective area which the half wave dipole dispose to the incoming radiation. So, we, we see now all the characteristics of this half wave dipole which is very commonly used in practice. It has a radiation resistance of about 73 ohms. It has a directivity of about 1.6 that is in terms of dBs, it is about 2.15 dB and it has an effective aperture which is which is approximately this. Having now understood these characteristics of the practical antennas and also in general the dipole antennas, now we can pose a very general question and that is yes, when we started investigating this half wave dipoles, we said we have a current distribution which is sinusoidal which was known a priori and we had said that time finding the current distribution is the most difficult part. Once we know the current distribution then getting this radiation characteristics is rather straightforward problem. And that time we said that since antenna can be visualized as a flared up version of a transmission line the current distribution is sinusoidal and then we got the radiation pattern for the sinusoidally varying current distribution. We can now ask if the current distribution is not sinusoidal, but if it is some general current distribution, then what is the relationship between the radiation pattern and the current distribution? So, we are posing a general problem now that if the current distribution in general is known, which need not be sinusoidal, then what is the relationship of the radiation pattern with the current distribution? So, let us say we are having the current distribution let us say which is linear like that and let us say the current is flowing perpendicular to the plane of the paper, but its amplitude is varying and its phase is also varying along the length. So, let us say we have this direction as some x direction and let us say I have this direction from which I measure the angles, angle let us say theta. This theta is not really the spherical coordinate theta. This is measured from a direction which is perpendicular to this line over the over which the current is distributed. So, imagine there is a current sheet which is there whose current is varying. The current flow is perpendicular to the plane of the paper but its amplitude is varying arbitrarily something like that. So, we can define this current now by what is called a linear current density. So, let us say I have linear current density and which is spreaded over a length along x direction from let us say 0 to L. So, length of this current sheet is, is L and we are measuring the angles with respect to a direction which is perpendicular to this plane of the current sheet. So, let us first say the current is flowing in this which is perpendicular to this that is given by j of x that is some magnitude 
j of x and some phi j phi of x, where this phi is the angle electrical angle which the current has and this is the magnitude of the current and it is 0 otherwise. So, this is if x is between 0 and L and this current is 0 otherwise. We can think of this current now as small small current element. So, I, I discretize this current distribution into small elements and let us say I have a small current element here which is at a distance x from here. So, the current which is flowing into this is the current linear current density which is j of x times d x if the width of this current element is d x. So, the current which is flowing in this in this direction is j x into d x. So, that is the current in this this is j of x which is this current amplitude now j x into d x. Now, since the currents are flowing like that the electric field which will be produced by this current in the in the plane of the paper will also be in the theta plane. So, that will be that will be in this direction. So, in this plane if I go the electric field direction is is like that. That means, if I take the field generated by this the radiation field and if I take the field generated by this element somewhere here both the electric fields are going to be in the same direction. So, I can find out the total field by simply adding the field because of this current element this current element and so on for the entire length. So, I can say then if I take a distance r which is very very far away from this current element and let us say this distance is, is given by d. And let us say I measure all my distances from a reference point in this direction which is given by r. The radiation originated from this current element will travel a distance shorter compared to this by this amount which is this. So, if this angle is theta then this angle is 90 minus theta or let us say we define the angle with respect to the axis of the current element. So, let us say that angle is given by let us say this angle is theta let us say this angle is 90 minus theta. So, let us define the angle not from this direction, but let us say if I define the angle with respect to the axis of the current this angle theta, then this axis length which this radiation would be traveling compared to this one would correspond to a length of x of cos theta. That means, the radiation which is originating from this point will be leading with respect to the radiation originating from this point correspond to a distance of x cos theta. So, then I can I can write now the current the electric field which is because of this small current element which is d e that is equal to j into eta j of x d x that is the current. e to the power minus j beta d divided by 4 pi d plus some constant which will which will take care of all the, all the term which are coming like beta and so on. But in this constant 
we are not worried too much because we are interested in finding out only the, the radiation pattern. So this all quantities eta k all, all this will essentially get absorbed into the amplitude variation in absolute term, but the relative variation of the electric field will not get affected by this constant. So, in fact, even this quantity 4 pi, even all that can be kept into, into this constant. Now, the distance d is r minus x cos theta. So, I can substitute for here d is equal to r minus x cos of theta and as we had done approximation when, when we analyze the dipole, this, this d can be replaced by r whereas in this case we have to actually substitute r minus x cos theta. So, we get the d e for a very far away point is all this quantity let me put into constant now 4 pi eta x and so on. So, let us say that constant is from k 1 j of x d x e to the power minus j beta r e to the power j beta x cos of theta divided by r I am replacing d by r in, the, in this expression. So, I get that electric field because of this small current element which is located here that essentially is given by this. So, the total electric field is nothing but integral over the length of this current distribution. So, I get the total electric field E that is integral from 0 to L this quantity k 1 e to the power minus j beta r upon r that is constant for a given distance j of x d x e to the power j beta x cos of theta. For a given distance let me put this quantity as some constant again so, let us call this constant as some k naught. So, I can write the electric field for this distribution E which will be some constant k naught integral 0 to L j of x e to the power j beta which is 2 pi upon lambda. So, I can put x upon lambda into cos of theta. What we can do now? multiplied by d of x. Since the current distribution is over non-zero over this length from 0 to L, even if I change the integration limit from minus infinity to infinity, the integral contribution will come only from 0 to L because beyond that point this j is 0. So, without affecting the value of the integral, this thing can also be written as from minus infinity to infinity j of x e to the power j 2 pi x by lambda cos theta into dx. Now, what I can do? I can define the length like a normalized length with respect to lambda and if I, if I do that and define the independent variable not theta but the cosine theta which is direction cosine. So, let us say I define variable L which is equal to cos of theta and we have a normalized length x prime which is x upon lambda. If I do that essentially now the E which will be a function of L direction cosine that will be equal to some constant k naught to lambda integral minus infinity to infinity j of x prime e to the power j 2 pi 
x prime l d x prime. This integral if you look at is a very familiar integral and that is the Fourier integral. So, this integral is the Fourier transform So, we have a very important relationship that is the radiation pattern of a current distribution is the Fourier transform of the current on the antenna structure. And this, this property is a very interesting property because once we establish this Fourier transform relationship, then we can make use of the Fourier transform relationship which are standard to visualize the radiation characteristics of an antenna. So, this relationship that the radiation pattern is the Fourier transform of the current distribution is the important relationship and having understood this relationship, then we can visualize the radiation patterns of various antennas and precisely that is what we will do when we meet in the next lecture. We will take some specific antenna current distributions. And then by using the Fourier transform properties, we will quickly try to visualize what kind of radiation pattern will be created by these antennas. So, instead of every time taking the current distribution and integrating it, now we can make use of the Fourier transform properties and from there we can visualize the radiation patterns of variety of antennas.